Hi guys, I'm Dan Hoff, CEO of Honey Stick, and today I'm bringing you guys a video that is based on special requests from a lot of our viewers that want to know exactly how to pick out the best oil tank. Now, this is normally not a video I would do because out of all this assortment of oil tanks that I have put together is basically comprising of about everything on the market. On our website, we probably sell about five or six of them. Now, I have these in our testing lab because I'm always testing them. We do have a lot of extractors that we private label for that we might be making this, these cartridges for that might not be available. But one of the common questions that a lot of our users are having that really wanted to see this video up is, I have a honey stick battery. When I go to dispensary and I have an option of picking out pre-filled cartridges, how do I know which one's going to be good or how it's going to work? You know, so this video here is going to go through from you being able to eyeball an oil 510 disposable cartridge and being able to tell base, have a good reasonable estimate of how it is going to be able to perform, what, it, what kind of features it's going to have so that you can pick out the best oil vape tank for your battery. Now, what is a disposable 510 thread cartridge? So there's a lot of people out there who purchase these 510 thread oil cartridges to fill themselves. And they say, but if it's disposable, can I only fill it one time? So the short answer is no. Most of these tanks you can take, if you're buying them empty, you can fill them up four to five times without a problem. However, some of them you can only fill once, and we'll go over that. Other times when you go to dispensary, most of them already have oil in them. So just because you have an amazing cartridge, if you're buying a bad extract, not even the best cartridge can make a bad oil taste good. So however, you can have good oil where the whole vaping experience gets dulled down or made bad or tastes burnt from a bad cartridge. So what this video is going to help you do is it's going to help you make some educated decisions when it comes to purchasing and selecting either the cartridge you're going to fill at home or the cartridges that you're going to pick up pre-filled to know how they're going to perform. So let's start off by starting from the very top of the cartridges of how you're going to be able to start making some identification. So let's do a close up here and start off with when you look at the mouthpiece to see what the whole size is gonna be. Let's start at the tip and work our way to the bottom. Okay guys, so here we have a close up view. We're gonna start at the very top of the cartridge so we can go in and start making some determinations. So you can see I put together what I thought was the best assortment of pre-fillable disposable tanks. So the tops, let's go to the very top. First things first, generally, the wider bore you have on a mouthpiece, which is the part that you inhale through, the more vapor you're going to get. The smaller that hole is, you are going to get either less vapor or it's going to have a smoother, easier transition into your mouth. So let's, let's take a shot from the top here just to show the differences in the size of the bores. So basically, as you could see from this basic stylus plastic tip card, it has a very small inlet hole even these stainless steel ones here right they have relatively small and some of them are larger when we work our way down you have these wide bore mouthpieces which have very wide inlets if you're a person who really likes to vape like this one is probably the widest if you like to get a big cloud and a massive hit so that you can really draw air through with minimal amount of resistance you probably want to get a cartridge that has a wider bore hole at the very top as opposed to having one of the smaller tips that are more focused on smoothness. Now, some people have said that the wider bore the mouthpiece is, sometimes you get a little flavor loss because you're just going straight mouth to lung instead of kind of mouth to throat to lung on your inhale. It kind of focuses more on just going straight to lung. However, you're probably going to get better activation and more of a hit. Now, once you've figured out what size bore you want, there's a whole multitude of mouthpiece materials. As you can see, you start off with the basic plastic mouthpiece, which is very lightweight. And then you have stainless steel 
and then you have ceramic, which you can see here. You even have wood and kind of an acrylic resin. And then you have not stainless steel, but more of an aluminum coated metal. So I can tell you right off the bat, if you are a chewer, if you like to chew on your cartridges, like in high school, I wouldn't want people to see what my pencil number two pencils look like. But luckily I grew out of that. But, um, you know, people uh, sometimes chew on their cigarettes, chew on their cartridges. If you are a chewer, you know, you have the plastic option that's not going to break your teeth. But you don't want little plastic particles getting into your mouth, so you're probably best off going with a natural wood cartridge. So this is a natural wooden mouthpiece. It's very soft wood. It's not even sealed with an epoxy for coating. However, if you're going to be refilling this a lot, do get new tips because when you chew on them, they are going to get beat up and the moisture sitting on wood does not bode well. You also have the acrylic and the metal ones. If you chew, I would stay far from the metal ones. You're going to end up breaking your teeth. The ceramic, what's a really unique offering with ceramic style mouthpieces is that they say that it's very clean, very easy to get clean. It also feels sturdy like the metal ones, however, it doesn't feel heavy in your mouth. So it sits very natural onto the lips and it offers, again, it's super easy to clean off. It's much lighter than the stainless steel pieces and it just feels overall more natural to whereas a stainless steel one, you know, you are putting a little piece of metal into your mouth. And what's unique, let's say about the powder coated ones, to where it's not like a shiny stainless steel and thick metal, it's a much thinner metal and it's coated so it's never, you know, really going to be cold to your lips if you pick them up if it's been in the AC or whatnot. So when selecting your mouthpiece, you have your, the bore of the inlet hole and you also have the mouthpiece material. Now mouthpiece shape also makes a difference. Generally, as you can see, your very wide bore ones are very cylindrical and that is to just allow maximum vapor to come up through them. These flattened mouthpieces that look more like black and milds are gonna dull the vapor down, condense it, and make it a smoother transmission. So again, we're going back to wide bore, more vapor, flattened is gonna possibly be smoother. If you're undecided and you want in between the two, you have these kind of hookah style tips that have a relatively wide bore, but they don't get flattened too much to restrict the vapor. So mouthpiece, shape, and size, definitely the first point of contact with the cartridge and kind of a first way that you can determine it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these cartridges out and we're gonna talk about what the body of the tank brings to the game. Okay guys, now before we move on to going over what the difference are, is are between the body of the tanks, one more notable thing about the mouthpiece is if you are buying your cartridges to refill, whether you buy it at a dispenser or buy them from guys like us to, to, to refill, the one thing that you have to know when you're dealing with tops is there is a new type of top, which child safety is really big in the industry right now. So there are compression tops that once the, the extractor or you fill them up and you basically crimp them down, right? You see there's no screw here. Once you crimp this down, this cartridge is not coming back apart for you to refill. So then once you go through your initial extract, right, on a child-proof crimp lock here, there's a pop top, you're not gonna be able to get back into this cartridge without breaking it and so you're not gonna be able to refill. So if you're looking for more than one use out of your cartridge, don't buy the crimp tops. This is also a crimp top. As you can see, there's no threading. And you can see this is one of the newer resin cartridges. It's actually a very popular cartridge. So once you push that down, you're not getting back into it. Now, let's talk about the body of these things. Now, you have generally two types of outside bodies or reservoirs which house the oil that you're going to be filling. You generally have plastic and you have glass. Now, things to look for is plastic cartridges. Generally, they're not as popular anymore because people, you know, they want purity. When you fill up a plastic cartridge, it sits for a long time. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm not a scientist, 
but they say that it could alter the change of the oil if it sits in there because the THC can react with the plastic and also the components in there. So they say a glass is much better to store things in because it is going to be medically neutral to reacting. And if you are going for a glass, especially the Pyrex grade of glass, is going to be perfect because it's also not sensitive to temperature changes. So if you're going plastic tank, where are the advantages? Well, the advantages are is you're never going to shatter your tank and they're super lightweight. So they're going to be much lighter. So if you're taking it out hiking or sporty and you don't want to carry around a tank, plastic tank weighs about half of what a glass tank does and plastic with a plastic mouthpiece it does not get much lighter and but if you're looking at already a plastic tank you have different grades of plastic and you can tell that from the clarity you see this is a little bit foggy this a lot of people would think is a glass tank but it is actually an upgrade plastic tank it just has a much higher quality clarity so this is an upgrade plastic tank that just has better clarity and among plastic tanks one of the most popular ones now is you have actually resin tanks which are like this generally they come in mouthpieces like this setup right here this is actually a resin tank you really can't tell the difference between the glass and the resin except the difference is is one will shatter if you hit it hard enough and one will not now if you are buying glass there are different grades of glass you know the company that does cartridges like this I'm sure you guys are familiar brass knuckles is a prime example of somebody who focus on cartridges like this this is a very thick grade of glass and you can tell that by touching it and honestly you can probably eyeball it to tell how thick the grade of glass is. So you look at it, it's gonna be thicker glass. This glass, this tank right here, which is our cloud tank, actually uses a very thick Pyrex certified glass. So this is actually a very expensive, good glass. It's very hard. You don't really have to worry about it breaking or shattering. It's very thick and sturdy. And other tanks are thinner glass, for example, this one you can tell generally tell if the glass is very very shiny and it almost looks like plastic basically that is indication without touching it that it is a thinner glass so those are just some things about the body you want to be careful of now when also looking at the body center post that has become a big area in debate within the market because generally plastic tanks don't have center posts so we'll just move those over here if you look at the center posts you can see some of them have wide bases some of them don't have a base some of them have rounded bases right they all have a different structure now what's the significance basically if you have a center post that has there's very thin it is more likely that the tank, if you are refilling it, that the center post will not be secure when you're securing the top piece down to the center post, that it could wobble, go out of place, and possibly leak. The downside, so then people put in a wider base to make it more stable, take up a little more space, make sure that you can screw the tank down and you're not going to have any areas of leakage. The thing is with a bigger center post is sometimes oil gets caught on the transition areas or on the hills of the center post. So then if you do have a wide center post base, you want to make sure it's nicely rounded so you're not going to get oil or any wastage caught up there that would make your tank less fuel efficient. For example, our ELF cartridge here in pink, as you can see, it's a wider center post, but there are no slopes in there that the oil can get caught on. So you're going to use a much larger percentage of the oil that's not going to get caught in the center post transition. However, going right from center post talks down to the heater, okay, let's talk heaters. Most basically, you have your wick cartridge, as you can see. It has a wick that stays up that is wrapped in a heating element wire. Usually those wicks are made of silica. And what happens is it absorbs the oils and it burns them and these happen just fine however it's not going to do you justice in accentuating the taste of the oils and especially if you have thick oils that dry up around there 
you can actually taste the heater and burn the heater before you burn the, the oil. So if you don't have a preheat function, you have a wick, you could run into some issues with taste there. So a lot of upgrades have moved to wickless cartridges. This is a plastic, those are beekeeper replacement tank. It is same concept, however, it has no wick. And it has a ceramic heating element. A lot of cartridges that say they're ceramic, and you can see they're ceramic generally with seeing a little white block through the inlet holes. So you could see some of them have a little white block. That means they're ceramic powered. Generally ceramic heaters mean that you're going to get better taste, better flavor notes, better flavor accentuation. Now what's become really popular lately is this what a lot of people have coined as C-cell style technology in heaters, which means that you have a ceramic block inside of the actual heater itself. Now let's find a nice example. Right there. That is a perfect example of a C-cell. It's a coated ceramic block. They have good heat up times and right now they're probably considered a very nice performance uh, tank on the market. However, your problems with these are is that once you've run through a fill or two, the taste can drop off. With thicker oils, if you do not have a preheat function, they can they can heat differently, so generally you want a more viscous oil with your C-cells. And if they don't have a wide enough inlet hole, which is the next area that we're going to talk about, you could run into some cloggage issues. But these have a coated block. It's not no rocket science about it, it's just a different take on a ceramic cartridge. If you look, this has a ceramic block, however, it is forced down, so this is going to use oils very efficiently. This is actually an updated version of the cloud tank in half mill. So that is a ceramic block heater. You get good taste notes on these. And then you have units that are wickless, but they don't have a ceramic heater that have different size inlet holes. Now, since we're talking about inlet holes, what's the general rule of thumb on inlet holes? You're going to go to a dispensary and see different sizes and shapes of inlet holes. As we showed, the C-cell had a very wide inlet hole. And other tanks, like our cloud tank, has a relatively wide inlet hole, but not overly wide. So the general rule of thumb is, is that the thicker your oil is that you are putting in there, the wider of an inlet hole you're going to need so that the oil can properly have access to the heater and vaporize. If you have a thin inlet hole, a, hole, a small inlet hole, and you have very thick oils, it's going to be very hard for that oil to come in contact with the heater and actually burn. So you're going to want, if you have thick oils, to have a large inlet hole so that that oil is always having contact with the heater. However, what if you have a large inlet hole and you have thin oils? Well, your, your possibility of leaking down through the post goes up exponentially. So if you have very thin oils, don't go crazy and get tanks with really large inlet holes because then you could have leakage, you could have wastage, or the oil is going to burn up very, very quickly. So I think that about covers what we would talk about with the inlet holes. Now airflow control. Airflow control is available on some tanks. We have our cloud tank. It has an airflow control here at the top. This all ceramic tank right here has airflow controls at the bottom. This tank has air controls at the top. Certain tanks have this, and what this is for is to allow you to control your hit. When you open up the air hole, it allows you to bring in air. It allows you to bring in air from the outside to kind of dilute and aerate your hit. If you have it closed, then you can concentrate your hit to basically only draw the vapor out of the tank and out of the little air holes that are located around the tank. But if you open it, you can draw in more air so you can take a bigger volume hit but it, some people like to concentrate their hit and not allow you to do that. So what is the downfall of the air control? The positive is you can control your hits and really tune in on what intensity of a hit you want. The downfall is, is if you leave it open, like it is partially open now, and you put it on its side and it's tilted, 
Well, that's an area where you can experience some serious top leakage out of a tank. A lot of measures are there to prevent that, but it could happen. So if you're somebody who gets airflow control and you don't use it, just make sure to always keep them closed. Now, since we've basically covered all angles of how to evaluate a tank, how to eyeball it, let's go over one more piece that is about the bottom air holes. So, some tanks at a dispensary, you're probably not even going to see the bottom air hole. So, this is probably the least important part of our oil tank analysis here. But, an important fact for you to know is generally the larger the bottom air hole is, okay, a lot of these run on a ball bearing system so that when you draw or you vaporize, a ball bearing moves out of place and allows the vapor to pass through. And when it's not being used, it goes down and creates a seal so no oil comes in down through the, uh, the tank. However, if you do not have an air hole, it is not going to work with auto draw units. And a lot of you guys have auto draw batteries. A lot of people have elves out there. So if you are buying a tank for your auto draw battery, make sure with your dispensary that you have an air hole at the bottom of the tank and that it is compatible with auto draw batteries. We tell people this all the time, and it's one of the most common mistakes. People buy a tank, they have an auto draw battery or an elf, they say my unit or my tank is a dud. It's not, it's just not compatible with the two. So if you have auto draw, make sure you have an air hole, make sure that it's a decent air hole. As you can see, this unit does not have an air hole, so it is not gonna be compatible with stylus batteries, it's not gonna be compatible with our elf. So you can see our ELF replacement cartridge has a very nice pronounced air hole with even some side vents. So you want to make sure that you're picking up the right cartridge. Now, for the very last part of this, because we now gave you all the tools that you're going to need to know, keep in mind when you're out tank shopping, now I'm just going to run through these tanks and basically give you the rundown of what you can expect out of each one of these tanks so that if you see one of these tanks on the shelf, you basically know what you're getting into. So hang tight while we get back for this final shoot. All right, guys, now we're gonna run through each one of these tanks and just give you a very brief uh, description of what you can expect for usage and the pluses and minuses of them so that when you're out tank shopping and you see one of these things, you have a good idea of what you're gonna get. So starting off with really the basic plastic stylus tank with the flathead tip, you're gonna get this cartridge and it has a wick, so you're not gonna, don't expect big boy taste or big boy hits. This is really meant to be a light, on the go, reliable, non-leak, easy to fill tank. These run on the blue plug fill system, very easy to fill, very easy to mass fill. But if you have thick oils and they get coagulated around there, you can get burnt silica taste if you're not preheating properly in here. So this isn't really a flavor tank or a monster hit tank, but what it is is really an old faithful tank that you'll be able to fill. Super light, is gonna take a beating. So if you're into extreme sports, this is probably your tank. If you wanna upgrade from that, stay plastic, but go with a wickless, something that has a ceramic heater, our beekeeper replacement cartridge with a metal mouthpiece, same very reliable top blue plug fill, not gonna get any leaking. The ceramic heater is definitely gonna give you much better flavor notes and more smoothness over the traditional wick system. And the stainless steel mouthpiece is a similar shape, but it's a higher quality fit and finish and feel. Then we have basically the upgraded glass version. This is a child-proof tank. It will lock in place after it is filled. It has relatively smaller inlet holes meant for more viscous oils, and it is ceramic. So you're gonna get about the same taste, but you're gonna have the purity of glass that your oils are interacting with over plastic. Basically, same thing, except it is refillable. You can unscrew this top. Okay, a lot of Flavor RX cartridges come in, uh, come in th this style. It is not ceramic. You have some decent sized inlet holes, however, not too wide, and you have good center post support. So it's gonna be a good, reliable, 
glass tank. However, the mouthpiece on these things is heavy and it is flattened, so it is more focused on smoothness, not hits. You have our ELF replacement cartridge, full ceramic, very lightweight, ceramic mouthpiece that you have in different colors. It's gonna feel good on the lips and it has the unique design center post that is wide, so it's still gonna give you good support. However, you're not gonna have any oil that gets caught up sitting on there. You're gonna use a big chunk of oil, really fuel efficient, nice power, awesome flavor tank. Then you have basically a gold finish tank that is somewhat popular out there. Similar square tip design, nothing really special. Ceramic heaters, the one problem is, is you have this really big flat top ledge a lot of oils can get caught up there that you might never be able to vape. So this is kind of an old school design, but it does have good seals. It feels good in the hand and it's relatively light. Basically, here's the updated version. This one migrated actually to a C-cell style. So you're gonna get a good heat up time. It is light, however, still not 100% feeling the center post because you are going to get oils that get stuck up there. Now this is a more modern C-cell with a bullet-shaped battery. We sell these along with the ceramic mouthpiece style as our ELF replacement cartridge. You're going to get some more performance out of these because they have wider heater holes, they have that C-cell center, and you're going to be able to get good flavor hits off of them. They have, you have a nice air inlet hole so they'll run well with auto draw batteries. You're gonna get some good power out of this tank. Actually this tank right here is a brand new tank. I haven't tested it yet. It is a fully ceramic interior so it's, good, so it's advertising that it's extremely pure taste. It also has a ceramic heater. I'm not 100% sure on the bottom airflow. Generally to me, bottom airflow could leak. So I haven't tested this tank yet, but my team does have samples of these because some of our customers are requesting a full-blown ceramic tank. This is basically just a one mil version and a different mouthpiece version of this tank that we were talking about. So difference is you're gonna have a ceramic mouthpiece that's gonna feel a little bit more natural and this one no air hole not gonna work well with auto draw batteries here and I can tell you from holding it it is a little heavier than I would like to see a tank this cartridge right here generally you'll see them filled in brass knuckles cartridges very good cartridge works with most auto draw batteries as well as battery powered these have one mil fill size i like the bowling pin style tip it's not exactly a wide bore but still definitely wide to get nice hits and it is thinned down for some elegance the gold finish that these guys have done is pretty cool so if you're looking for a good pre-filled cartridge i mean these have generally been pretty reliable i haven't heard any problems of leaking they have good taste they don't really excel so much in taste. They don't excel so much in vapor, but it's one of those tanks to where it does do a lot of all those right. It runs at about 90% ultra reliable, I've heard. Here you have the resin and resin tip C-cell style batteries. As you can see, really improve the, uh, the groove there to burn up more of the oil. And again, our ELF replacement cartridges are similar with the ceramic mouthpiece. I like the see-through tops. It's really cool when you're drawing vapor out of them. And also, they're easy to clean. They're light in your mouth. You don't feel like you're gonna break your tooth if you incidentally bite on them. And it's a cool little reliable tank. This one, however, it is a child seal. Once you push it down, you're not getting it open. So only buy these for the one-time fill, unless you see it's got a screw top. So ask them to specify. Same exact thing, just a wood mouthpiece for those people who like the, the natural wood. This one is the same as the wooden, except it has a different, has a little airflow control here at the top. It's kind of unique. You just swivel the mouthpiece and that opens and closes the airflow. 
if you want a little bit more control on your mouthpiece. These three cartridges all come from the same factory. It is, I mean the same family. It is basically the uh, cloud tank here and uh, they have adjustable airflow for these two, the half mil and the one mil versions. These are probably one of the tanks that I endorse the most. I love the wide bore mouthpiece. I like the ability to adjust, especially for connoisseurs. They have a nice ceramic heater with decent sized inlet holes so you get nice big hits, but you're not gonna lose out on that flavor. I think the center post sloping on these were done right. They're very stable. I haven't heard any complaints of these things leaking. This is the same thing, half mil, except it has a hookah style tip on it. It's kind of like the top of a bowling pin. It's like half flattened, half widened tip. And this is the glass version of the cartridge we showed you with a lock top not a thread you push it down and it has also has a resin reservoir this is not glass I have not tested this tank yet but it is very similar to the uh, the other ones that we went over in that facet so it should be a good one so anyways guys thank you for tuning in I hope some of the pro tips and some of the analysis tools that we've given you are gonna help you make better decisions when you're out there looking for your pre-filled cartridge to buy at a dispensary or looking to fill your own. Now, one question I know is gonna be a follow-up is which one of your batteries basically fire everything. So let me just come out and tell you, our B-Master battery, you buy one of those, you're gonna fire 99% of what's out there the way that we designed it. Check out the separate video we did on that. Our Mini Max Original with the smart chip. The electronics in this thing, it is, I basically want you to find me a tank that this thing doesn't fire and I want to know it exists because so far I haven't heard one. Really nice, powerful. Check out the separate video on that. Also, our Gold Line battery. These two batteries are variable temperature. They're a little different in size and capacity. However, both really awesome, should fire anything that you give it. Both these tanks, three temperatures, both have preheat functions, easily charge, work awesome with all these tanks. Mini Max, your definite go-to. So you buy one of these three batteries, you can rest assured that basically whatever you pick up at the dispensary, you're gonna be able to fire it. So for this and several other cool videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure if I missed anything, Drop it in the comments below to spread the knowledge. Make sure to be in touch with us on social media on Instagram at Vape Honey Stick and official Vape Honey Stick. Make sure to use my special promo code Honey420 if you want to pick up any of our tanks that we've picked out to sell to you or our cool batteries or lots of other cool items. Make sure to be in touch with us, like this video, stay tuned, stay lifted, and I'll see you next time.